Hey, how's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add multiple event listeners to one single item. Also, that item will be then able to remove event listeners from other HTML elements. So, with this being said, this is what we're going to create today. If we hover into this button, I'm just going to change the title right here. If we click this button, then it's going to make this rectangle active. And as soon as we hover with our mouse it in here, it's going to, well, just generate a random number as long as we're hovering in there. Now, if you move out, move back in, move out, move back in, it's still working. But if I click this button again, nothing happens. But if I double click it, then the event listener will be removed. So if I hover over this square, the event no longer is active. So how are we going to do that? Well, stick around and let me show you just in a couple of seconds. So I just created the empty folder. Let's call it code. And within here, I'm going to create a index.html and let's just start with a boilerplate so shift one and enter okay there's nothing much to do here just an h1 not even going to give it a class or id is going to just have a text of multi events it's gonna end here events and after that h1 we're going to create a button just a regular button is going to say click me without an id without any kind of class no worries about that after that i'm going to create a div now this is going to have, I'm just going to do some inline style. Don't need any CSS. I just add here a height of 200 pixels. Uh, then I'm going to add a width, also 200 pixels because I want this to be a square element. And after that, I did too much react, it seems. <laughs> I no longer know how to add inline styles in HTML. And then a background color or just a background. Let's just do a background still remaining within here. So comma, semicolon and background and we're going to add here a gray color okay now let's just open this up right click open with live server and there we go there's a background Ooh, what oh i'm missing here pixel you know what let's push it down a bit let's add another semicolon and margin and top i'm going to push it down with two ram and there we go so let me reiterate we have a we have a title we have a button and each one as a title we have a button and we have a div with some basic styling. And now let's create a JavaScript file. So next we're going to create a main.js and I'm going to integrate it here before the body text of script with the source of main.js. Okay, let's also open the console. So click on your browser, right click, inspect, and then click on the console and you should see your console within here. You can just clear it if you have any kind of stuff in there that you don't need. Then let's go to our main element here. And let's grab on first of all to our, well, to our title. So let's get here const, Not, no longer going to call them variables. Either it is a constant or it is a let, which is a variable. So we're going to do both variables, but what is a constant cannot be changed and the other one can't be changed. So we're going to go to the title. We're going to call this as title. We're going to go into a document, query selector, and we're going to select from here the H1 element. Okay, let's just do here console log so we know that this is working CLG and let's console log here the title. Title, there we go. You should see a title down here in the console appearing. My microphone is squeaking, so don't worry about that. Now, next I'm going to also select the button, const and button and document.query selector and let's select the only button tag this is why I, I, I didn't give them any kind of ids or classes because we only have those and let's also select const and let's select the square the div i'm going to call it square s q u r r e and document dot query selector i'm going to select what are you doing query selector i'm going to select the div great so if you have Always, if you have any kind of doubts, just copy all your selections into the console log and they should all appear. There we go. We have a H1, we have a button and we have a div. Perfect. So let's do something with them. First things first, we're going to add one event listener to the button. Now we have a button selected, so we could just go ahead, select that button variable, add a event listener of, for example, click to it. Next up, we're going to add a function, which is then going to, what am I doing here? which is then going to do something. For example, in our case, it's going to console log the string of click. Okay, so if I click this button, you should see down here, also I'm going to co uh, comment out the other console log. So if I click the button, you should see down here, click. If I click it multiple times, you see multiple clicks. Okay, 
Now, next up, let's do something with the button. We're just going to just take the title and change its style, change its color by just selecting the style property and then color. And there we go. And we're going to change it to red, just adding the string of red. So each time I click this button, this element right here is going to turn red. Now, how about adding another event listener to it? How can we do that? Well, we're just going to select the same button variable again, add an event listener to it. And this time, instead of adding a click event, we're going to add a DBL, meaning a double click event to this. Now, when this double click will happen, when this event is triggered, then we're going to console log, we're just going to console log DBL, let's call it double, double and click. So let's see if I click this one time, let's also click the console. If I click this one time, they should console a click, click it two times, it should still console a click, but if it click it two times really fast, click, click, then it should console a double click. Okay, but we're also seeing that the click was console locked two times. So this means, let me refresh this, let's clear the console. If I do a double click, then it will console lock both event listeners. So both event listeners are triggered, the click and the double click. So this is pretty clear until now. Uh, next up, I'm going to add a, another event. I'm going to call this button and dot on. I'm not going to add, add event listener. I'm going to do the shorthand on mouse and let's go with a on mouse enter this time now because i'm using here a event then i need to pass a, a callback function because to call the function or the action that we're going to need here which is going to be let's change the title dot inner html to the string of mouse has entered the oh what am i doing has the button element or just the button whatever you want to call it. let's just call it button okay so the mouse just entered the, the button if i enter with my mouse the button now if i'm still hovering over the button nothing would change but what if i leave this button now i could do a on mouse on mouse and leave here and then and then it should console like something else mouse has left the button so when i oh come on so when I enter, mouse has enter. When I leave, mouse has left the button. But I could also do something else. So I'm going to comment out both of them. And I'm going to do a button dot on mouse, mouse, enter. And I'm going to copy this. And on mouse, you know what? No, not yet. I'm not going to copy it. I'm going to assign this to a callback function. And that callback function will then call upon another function. So if you do React, you know that you can have event handlers. We're going to call this event handler. And this event handler will have handle the event. Whichever event will be passed in here will be handled by this function. Now I'm going to copy this now and replace the on mouse enter with on mouse leave. So both on mouse enter and on mouse leave, the event handler will be triggered. But this event handler, I'm going to copy it. Let's create it down here, is a function that's going to wait for a event that's going to pass in here. And now I can use if statement. So if, for example, that event that is going to be passed in there, so event dot type, we can also select the type of event is equal to mouse enter, then the title dot inner HTML will be exactly as we typed it up here. I'm just going to pass in enter and this right here. I don't need the parenthesis and else if, it is some sort of other event. For example, the event dot type is a type of mouse on, excuse me, yeah, mouse leave, mouse leave. Please take note, I'm not using here on mouse leave because this is already adding the event listener. Now the event is passed in here and it's, the type is checked and the type now is mouse leave. Okay, so that's the actual event, not the event listener plus the event. The title, then we're going to change the title, just going to copy whatever is up here. And we're going to change this to remove that parenthesis. And there we go. So the title dot inner HTML should be something else. So both of the both of them are commented out. Now theoretically, if I enter the mouse, it's going to give me this right here because I just entered it. And if I leave the mouse, uh leave the element with the mouse, not leave the mouse. I'm going to leave my mouse. Boom, it's gone. So if the mouse pointer to be more precise, leaves the element, then that will be changed. The event will be changed. Now, next up, I'm going to show you the very last thing. This is how you can remove event listeners 
from a specific element. Okay, now in order to get started, first things first, I want to show you something. You cannot use in this case, uh, let's do here a, a square. We just selected the square. So this square right here, we cannot do a on event listener. Okay, we, can, we cannot use it. We need, need to add the event listener to the element. So we will use the old and proven method. Now, what I want to do here is, well, create first of all a on mouse move event. So actually I'm going to create a function that is going to add the event. So add mouse move event, and this will take in the event. So basically I'm just creating and naming the function here. Now need, this needs to take in the event. I also could use E here as a abbreviation, as a shortcut. Now, when the event is passed in here, the event that is going to be passed in will be added to the square. So add event listener and we're going to add. Now, you know that you, normally you add events by using them as strings. But in our case, because we're adding a variable, we need to use temporary literals. Now I do have a video on temporary literals. If you are not familiar with them, just check, out, check it out on my channel. So. We're going to use here template root. This means dollar sign and whatever event will be passed into this function is going to be used here. And then a function will be triggered, which is going to call get random. Now we need to create this function. So let's go down here, function get random. And this is a pretty simple function. We're just going to return here a title.innoHTML. And we're going to return to the title.innoHTML the math method. And we're going to use the pro the property of random on it. Okay, so instead of whatever the title says, we're going to replace it with a random number. That's pretty simple. I'm missing an E and here. Now that's not all that I want to do. I also want to change the title then. So let we need something to tell us that the event was just triggered. So we're going to change the title dot inner HTML to the string, actually the template literal of event listener off and again i'm just going to pass in here what every event will be passed into this function again you could pass in some kind of other event later on and i can use also quotation marks so this event was added to the element and also in order to signify this with some kind of color i'm going to turn the square now into a red square so we're going to select the square and style and background and i'm going to change the background now to red, so the string of red. Okay, now where should we add this event listener? Well, I'm going to add it, actually not the event listener, but the function, I'm going to add it to the button. So when I'm going to click the button, the event of mouse move will be added to this little square. In order to prove it, let's click this now, let's click the button, and you can see the title just changed to red, so let, let's just do a refresh. So if I click the button, you see mouse has left the button. No, that's not what I want to do. The inner HTML, wait just a second. So title.inhtml event listener of blah, blah, blah was added. Why didn't this work? Let's click it again. Huh. All right, so let's click the button. And now if we hover over or we enter the mouse, with, uh, we enter our square with our mouse, then you're going to see that random taking effect. Now, if I leave the square and go back in there again, is still having the same effect. So now I want to do is to take out that effect. And for this, we're going to create a, another function, which is basically going to remove that event listener. So let's create a function of remove mouse move event. Again, whatever event will be passed in here will be then removed. So let's just scroll up a bit and we're going to take our square. And instead of adding the event listener, we're going to now remove the event listener. And now you need to specify which event listener you want to remove. Now again, we're going to use here temporary literals. Then we're going to pass in using dollar sign and curly brackets. We're going to pass in here the event that is going to be passed into this function as an argument will pass down here. And then we're going to trigger the get random function again. And we are after that also going to alert using windows, using windows dot alert the user that the event was now removed. So basically I'm going to take this again, copy it, paste it in here and say was removed and from element. Okay. And in order to signify this, we're kind of color also going to change the square 
background to gray again. So let's add the event. There we go. It's working. If I now take this function and paste it into the double click. So let's double click this. So let's click this. So let's click our button. Event was added. Let's double click the button. And after we hit OK, whoa, it didn't pass in the event mouse. Oops, sorry about that. Pressure. Okay, all we need to do now is pass in the event that we want to remove here. So the mouse move, obviously. So let's try this out. If I click this button, then we're going to add the event here to the square. Now, if I double click it, then we're going to get the alert. And after that, the square should return to its initial color and also without the event on of mouse move. So pretty simple. This is how you add and remove events from also add multiple events to one single element and also remove that event or multiple events from that element. So I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hope you also understand now how events work and how multiple events work and how you can move events. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave any kind of questions or suggestions down in the video description. I read them all. I respond to all comments. Also, if you want to support the channel, then please consider trying out my courses. The, the best way to support the channel is actually